confidential prayer, email or text your request to prayer at solofieldchapel.org or by text at 876-877-9794. Visiting with us for the first time? Welcome! We invite you to complete the contact card in the link below to connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving cheerfully. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. One, you may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by a direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account, number 804161, branch number 50575, or click Give on our website, swallowfieldchapel.org. Donations for food care packages should be so indicated. Meetup, the young adult-led ministry of Soil Free Chapel, will be starting a new series, From the Cell, a study through the book of Philippians, on Monday, September 30. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Tell a friend and bring a friend. Let's meet up. Are you in a Connect group or ACE class? Well, if you're not, what are you waiting on? Sign up for a Connect group and an adult Christian education class. Come connect to God, dig into the Word with each other as we grow together. Click in the link in the description below to see the groups and classes offered this semester. Are you grieving the loss of a loved one? GriefShare provides hope and healing in these difficult times. Join GriefShare Tuesdays at 7pm via Zoom. Click the link in the description below to register. Join us for Wellness Wednesdays. Recharge your mind, body, and spirit. Prioritize your well-being and continue your wellness journey. Every Wednesday at 6 p.m. at number 7 Swallowfield Road. Commit to a healthier, happier you. Also, it is not too late to sign up for the More Couples Weekend to be held at Royalton Blue Waters on the weekend of October 25 to 27. Visit wallerfieldchapel.churchcenter.com to sign up. More, making our relationships extraordinary. The Prison Ministry Cake Sale is today, right after both services. Come nice up your taste buds and help raise funds to support the Prison Ministry's Christmas outreach projects across several correctional facilities. You won't want to miss Mark 9. Nine years of music and award show. Sunday, September 29 at 5 p.m. at number 5 featuring Mark Johnson. Special guests include Paul Henry, The Hummingbirds, Swallow Feet Chapel Sunday School Choir, and more. Visit markjohnson.com slash RSVP to RSVP today. Ladies, come join this Friday as we go forward. A guide to moving from stock to abundance with Dr. Kishana Salmon Ferguson. This Friday, October 4, on Zoom, starting at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, it's wellness night for the Mansem this Friday, October 4, starting at 7 p.m. Brother, your body is the only one you will ever have. So if you're a man, you should pay attention to how you manage your body. And if you're a man, muscles are a huge factor in the quality of life. Also, if you're a man, you want to know what David Hemmings are going to say this Friday, whether you're 18 or 80 years old. Bring a bro. This is a male-only event. Melo is the men's ministry of Swallowfield Chapel. And I step up, you know, said that them can't talk to we Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Man, I step up, you know, said that them can't talk to we Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Man, I step up, you know, said that them can't talk to we Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Man, I step up, you know, said that them can't talk to we Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Where am I coming from? Give me the Bible, give me the Bible, give me the Bible in a man. Whatever step with the poly commit faster. Don't bother with the crime and disaster. Who's in the pretty many, pretty many, pretty many tower be stand? Our school, Liberty Academy, is seeking someone to fill the vacant position of the executive director. If you're interested, please send an email to liberty at priory.mainoffice at gmail.com or visit our website for more information. Members, please save the date. Sunday, October 6th at 6 p.m. at number 5. We will host a hybrid members meeting. 
For those unable to join us in person, look out for the link which will be provided so you can participate virtually. Stay tuned! For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you all as we worship together. And welcome to church. We're so happy you could join us. My name is Claudine. Our speaker today is Brother Paul Hemmings, and the title of his message is That Kind of God. Our mission at Swallowfield Chapel is to be and to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And we do this by connecting, growing, and serving. This simply means that we help people to connect to God and to the Christian community of faith, the church. We help people to grow as faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we empower people to serve wherever God has placed you in the world. Today, we will be celebrating communion. So please, get your bread or biscuit, wine or grape juice ready as we partake in this act of worship together. Please feel free to share this link with your family and friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Come, let's worship together. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I Forever is true. 
exalted on high. Oh, exalted. Lord, we lift you up. We glorify your name. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Yes. Oh, we lift it high. Oh, he is exalted. The scripture reading is taken from Matthew 20, verse 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who, has, who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am ge generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord.
Matchless love and beauty, endless worth Nothing in this world will satisfy me Jesus Jesus, you're the cup that I won't run dry Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? love and beauty endless worth nothing in this world will satisfy Jesus you're the cup that won't be dry your presence is heaven Good morning, Swallow. Welcome. It's great to have you again and to be able to share with you. It has been a minute. I want to thank uh, Sister Claudine for reading the scriptures for us. And of course, we are calling this one, That Kind of God. That Kind of God. We hope that indeed this message will indeed inspire you and get, give, give you a better understanding as to who our God is and not just an understanding, but that will apply these truths to our lives. Sister Claudine read from Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through to 16. I'm just going to pick up at verse 13 to 16 and then we pray and get right into the message today. Verse 13 of chapter 20, Matthew says, But he answered and said to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go. But I wish to give to this last man the same as you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with what is my own? Or is your eye envious because I am generous? Watch that word. So the last shall be first, and the first last. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to share your word, the opportunity to hear you speak to us. Again, you are speaking. So Lord, we pray that you will speak in audible terms, so that we might hear, so that we might understand, and so that we might be doers of your word. Lord, you know my prayer for us all the time is that we'll be transformed by your word, that we will conform to your will, and that, Lord, our hearts will be formed, our personalities will be formed into that of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, what we have not, grant us. What we know not, teach us. And what we are not, please make us. For we pray these things in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. That kind a God. 
The kindness of God has always been welcome, but an act that it's an act that befuddles us. We call this kindness of God grace. In fact, Philip Yancey begins chapter 4 of his most popular book, What's So Amazing About Grace, with this famous anecdote from C.S. Lewis. It goes like this. During a British conference on comparative religions, experts from around the world debated what, if any, belief was unique to the Christian faith. They began eliminating possibilities. One, incarnation. Other religions had different versions of God's appearing in human form. What about resurrection? Again, other religions had accounts of return from death. The debate went on for some time until C.S. Lewis wandered into the room. What is the rumpus about, he asked and heard a reply that his colleagues were discussing Christianity's unique contribution among the world's religions. Lewis responded, Oh, that's easy. It's grace. Grace. When compared to the world or any other religion, the Christian faith has something to offer that is very special. G-R-A-C-E, grace. Grace is Christianity's gift to the world, but even though we are repositories of this precious commodity, we are not good depositories of it. In other words, we love to experience grace, but we are not very good at dispensing grace. We are not very gracious. The way we dispense grace defies the meaning of it, for for us, grace is given to those that we like. Grace is something that is not deserved. When we give that which is deserved, we cannot call it grace. This is a contradiction in terms. Grace is something that is offered to persons who are undeserving, not to persons we like and think measure up, and therefore we give this act of kindness to them. Before us is a parable, the parable of the landowner. And this landowner is a very interesting landowner. And so Jesus uses this parable, a true-to-life experience of, of some sorts, to teach something that is spiritual, something that is moral, something that has a deeper meaning. Isn't that what a parable is? A parable is the use of an illustration, often taken from everyday life, to communicate a deeper moral lesson or spiritual truth. But this is what I like about Gary Hamrick's uh, definition of a parable. Here is part. It is a tool used to get the listener to think and understand. A parable is given so that you might think it through, so that you might wonder what is this person trying to say, and you delve deeper into what they are trying to do. So let me just uh, summarize this parable for us. The, the parable is about a rich landowner, and he wants some workers to work in his vineyard to work in on his property and so he goes out about the first watch first hour of the morning we call it 6 a.m about 6 a.m in the in the morning and he goes out seeking these laborers now understand the context that for them laborers would gather at the marketplace hoping that they would get a day's work at a particular place and so this landowner goes out and he goes out to them at about 6 a.m. in the morning and he has a few of these guys. Then he went out again at the third, third hour, about 9 a.m. in the morning. And then about the, the sixth hour, about 12, 12 midday in, in, in the afternoon. And then about uh, 3 o'clock again, 3 p.m. And then finally he went out about 5 p.m. in the evening. Remember, the Jewish day runs from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. in what we call 6 p.m. in the in the evening a 12 hour day for them at work and about 5 p.m. of that day the landowner still went out to find to find workers I want to suggest to us that this passage, I think, speaks a lot about grace and God's grace, God's kindness. In fact, to the end of the passage, we hear the landowner saying, in rebutting what one of the workers, the workers complain, he says to the worker, is it because of my own generosity why you have a problem? 
So this is about God's generosity because the landowner represents God. It's about God's grace. It's about, it's about God's goodness. It's about God's kindness. He's that kind of God. And so I wanted to just bring to our attention five points coming from the text. And then I make some more application at the end. In other words, I'm going to give you a brata because I'm being gracious to us today. The first thing I notice is that we, we, we can talk about five things from this text. First of all, we can talk about God's abundant grace. We can talk about also God's appealing grace. We can talk about God's amazing grace. We can talk about God's abnormal grace. And we can talk about God's antagonizing grace. In fact, I can't wait to get to that point. The antagonizing grace of God. So let's deal with the abundant grace of God. The scripture tells us that this landowner goes out at 6 a.m., at 9 a.m., at 12 noon, at 3 p.m., and at the 11th hour, which is 5 p.m. He goes out seeking workers to work on his land. That's amazing. Because whilst I understand the 6 a.m. and I kind of understand the 9 a.m., I don't quite get the 12 a.m. and the 3 p.m. And worse, I don't get the 5 p.m. calling of laborers. Did he need so many workers on his plot of land? Did, did, did he really have so much work for them to do? He may not have, but what this is teaching us about God, about this landowner, and more so about God, is that God has an abundance of grace. God's grace cannot run out. God's grace is what we call in the country, it walla walla. It nuff. It can done. And he goes out and he calls these men. In fact, when he went out at some point in the day, they were idling because at about 3 p.m. or 5 p.m., these men started to play dominoes. Because, for sure, I'm not going to get anything to do. So I might as well have just play some games with the boys. Some Ludo, some dominoes, some just, just chat about anything, talk about current affairs, talk about Manchester uh, City or, or, or an Arsenal match kind of a thing. Because the day is done. But, but here comes this man giving them work at this hour of the day. An abundance of grace. It didn't have to happen, but it happened. Isn't that what grace is? Grace is something that we, first of all, don't deserve. For grace is something that we, that does not need to happen, that should not happen at all, but then it happens. In fact, the Apostle Paul speaks about this in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 14. He speaks about the grace of our Lord God was exceedingly abundant. Because Paul knew who he was. Paul knew that he was a person that was persecuting the church, that was persecuting Jesus Christ. But Jesus met him and Jesus called him into the ministry. In fact, he calls himself the worst of sinners. Well, let's take notes about this text. It says that when the, the landowner went out, especially the last time, he says, what are you doing here? And they said to him, we are here because nobody for the whole day had us. They are riffraffs. They are nobodies. Nobody don't want them. Work has run out. But this landowner come with this abundance of grace to issue to them, and they are beneficiaries of this Grace. I want to make this point to us, which is a very potent point as we look as we look at God's abundant grace. It is this that God deals with us according to who He is, not according to who we are. Let me say that one more time. God deals with us according to how what, how He is or who He is, not according to who we are. And I'm happy for that. Because I am nobody and I'm happy that I have experience of God's abundant grace. Can you say like me that you have experienced God's abundant grace? But are we going to take God's grace for granted? Absolutely not. For Paul says in, in, in uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 20, where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. And we're so happy for that. So that as sin reigneth in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Unless we think that this is a license to sin, Paul continues, shall we sin so that grace may abound? Absolutely not. 
But still, we are grateful for God's abundant grace. He keeps going out calling, and God keeps calling people. Even to this very day, he keeps calling. And the kind of people I see God calling, he is. And a God with an abundant grace indeed. Not only do we see abundant grace in the text, but to follow that, we see appealing grace because grace comes beckoning at us. Grace comes calling at us. Grace comes when we do not even want it, but grace comes at us nonetheless. Notice that this man went himself and he called the workers. When he gets to paying the workers, he uses four men. But when it talks, when we talk, this text talks about him going out to get the workers, he goes himself because he knows the kind of person he is. And he probably is not trusting his workmen to go and call other workmen because they might pick and choose and they might come back returning saying, well, we didn't see anybody or it is too late for us to call anybody. He goes himself and he goes calling these men to work. Grace comes beckoning to every man, everywhere. And so he appeals to these men as he goes out. He, he calls to them. He goes searching for them. He goes, he sees them playing dominoes, and he's saying, hey, look, I have work for you. Come. And he calls. That's the nature of God's grace. When we are not looking for God, God comes looking for us. Isn't that amazing? I wasn't looking for God necessarily. But God came looking for me. And I wonder if you had a similar kind of a testimony where God's grace appealed to you and God's grace come crying out at you. In fact, there's another way to understand this appealing grace. And this might be a little bit uh, more controversial. But a, a job, guys like, a guy like John Calvin talks about irresistible grace. And by that he means God's grace is a grace that we can't, can't resist. In fact, whenever God pleases, he puts it this way, he overcomes our resistance. And in a sense, I experienced that in my own salvation experience. Because I had nothing to do with God, with God but God's grace overcame, overpowered me and I responded to the grace of, of God. God's grace comes calling and squealing at us and it comes at every hour of the day and it comes appealing to us and for some of us it comes calling and for some of us we couldn't resist that grace because it is so appealing. God's abundant grace, the text is teaching us, God's appealing grace but thirdly, I think the text also talks about God's amazing grace. Because grace does more than is required. It sees what the person could be, not who the person is necessarily. It sees the potential of the person. It sees what could be. It sees how I could make this person's life better. It's an amazing grace. It's amazing in who it goes out to. The violence of sinner who truly believes. Now the truth is, for some of us, we want to. We, we, we think we were we weren't too too bad. We were we were, we were good. We, we were okay. You know, uh, we live a life that was very. Um, it wasn't violent. We didn't, weren't liars and all these things. So we, we think of ourselves as as morally we were upstanding, and we think we tend to think that it, we, we weren't so bad. But the truth is, God views us or viewed us as bad, terrible. But God's grace came calling this amazing grace in fact the the, the slave owner uh, um, Isaac uh, Newton as he was a slave owner enslaving uh, people at one point God came through breakthrough to him so much that he had to give up um, this slave trade this uh, tra uh, trading of, of slaves he gave it up and he wrote he penned this song that we to, throughout the ages we have been singing it amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see 
Here Paul again, he says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry, although I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy. Somebody said mercy. In other words, grace is amazing in who it goes out to. The kind of people who see God, God reaching out to and God saving. Can, can, can you imagine? Just think of the worst person right now in, 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 in the world. Let, let's say in America. Let's say in Jamaica. Let's say in Canada. Just think about that person that, that people tend to despise. Can you imagine that God's grace can break through in that person's life? I know what you're thinking about right now. There are two persons at least you're thinking about, that I am thinking about. God's grace is powerful to break through. It's not only uh, amazing who it goes out to, but it's amazing what it gives. You see, God's grace does not give tit for tat. It doesn't give sparingly. It doesn't give less. It doesn't give what we deserve. God's grace gives far more than we expect. That's the nature of God's grace. And we shall see how that grace plays out in the text. God's grace gives more than one expects. We have an expectation of God. We have an economy that's different from God's economy, but God's thinking is much different from our thinking. God's economy is a grace economy. I shall talk some more about that. It's not only amazing in who it goes out to, but or amazing what it gives, but it's amazing in how it generates. It seeks you out. He says to the, the, to the men, why are you standing there? The landowner asks them. Why are you standing there? The landowner, as I said before, appealed to them. He's very concerned about them. These are the, the, the leftovers, the riffraffs, as I said before, the, 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 the what left. But the landowner is interested in them, just as oh God is interested in us. Watch this. The grace of God does not give us more blessing than we deserve. It gives blessing to us completely apart from the principle of deserving. It gives far more than what we deserve. And that's something we need to, to, to reflect on as we think about this amazing grace of God. So we've spoken about the abundant grace of God. We have spoken about the appealing grace of God. We have spoken about the amazing grace of God. Let's now look at the abnormal grace of God. I call it, it's atypical. It's not, it's not normal, as the, the young, young people would say. It's unconventional in its application. The landowner uses unconventional methods. Hear what he did. He says to his foreman, call the workers, everybody here, because it's pay time. It's the end of the day. It's six o'clock. It's time to pay them. Call everybody in. And by the way, let's change things up a little bit. Pay those who came last. Pay them first. It's unconventional. Because the men who came at 6 a.m., you don't want to think they want to get their pay so that they can just go home to their wife and, and, and just report to the wife how the day went. And it was a great day. A man just came and he called us. And in fact, from 6 o'clock, we get work. We didn't have to wait long. They want to tell all of the day's activity. And so they would have wanted to go home first. But the landowner says to his foreman, pay those who came last first. And so in doing that, he flipped the script. And so in doing that as well, guess what will happen? Those who came first would see what was done to those who came last. And those who came first saw that those who came last got a denarius. Now a denarius was, is equivalent to a day's pay at the time. Let's say a day's pay today is, uh, let's say, uh, $15,000 maybe in some in some circles. I don't know. But let's say that's it. The, when these men who came first looked and they saw that these men who came last got $15,000 for the day. Can you imagine what is going through their minds? They are telling themselves that, listen, if these guys get $15,000, we like this, 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 uh, this landowner. We, 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 we really like him because he's, he's generous. In fact, they are saying to themselves, he's generous. And we, we can only imagine how generous he's going to be to us. If they got 
uh, dineros that we agreed to, we are going to get two dinerai. But something else happened. Because there's a system that God has that is different from the world's system. Is it a system of law or what we have? It's easy to figure out. You get what you deserve. That's a, that's a system we know. You get what you deserve. But the system of grace is foreign to us. God deals with us according to who he is, not according to who we are. Who is? Not according to who we are. The point is that God rewards on the principle of grace, and we should therefore expect surprises. Let me just talk about that a little bit. The fact that God rewards us on the principle of grace, there is always going to be surprises. Because the truth is that you and I have a plethora of stories how people just move almost to the end, uh, the front of the line, just move past us, just get some blessings that, that just blow our mind. How comes them just come and get that kind of a blessing? How comes I am, I have been doing better than this person? I know this person from high school. I, 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 I uh, did them in high school. They're not bright like me, kind of a thing in college. Oh my God, I'm a, but these persons are just being blessed. Those, those moving fast ahead of you. And they're not doing anything illegal or unethical. But it's just the grace of God. And sometimes that bothers us because the grace of God is not normal. It's abnormal. God's system is different from our system. God's economy is far different from our economy. So that's the abnormal nature of grace. But fifth... And final, before I make some more application, there is what I call antagonizing grace. In other words, a grace that makes uncomfortable those who see its application. It's antagonizing. It, it bothers you. It, it, it doesn't seem fair. In fact, one person says, favor ain't fear. God, God, God seems to be unfair at times because God, look how long I am doing this and this person just come and this person is able to get that. You're unfair, God, and I don't like how you're operating, God. The first Irons, the Irelings were upset. First, they are paid last and made to see what the others got and now they are being given the same amount, having worked longer than the others. And sometimes we get upset as to how God, 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 God move and how God bless other people. In fact, I'm reminded of the story of Jonah. And, and, and Jonah didn't want to go down to Nineveh. And, and we hear why he didn't go, want to go down to Nineveh at the end of the book. He says, I didn't want to come and preach in a God to Nineveh now because I know you're a compassionate and gracious God. Can you imagine that? Jonah has a problem with God because God compassion, too gracious, too compassionate, too kind. And don't talk about Jonah because that's how I am. And that's how many times you are. We have a problem with God's graciousness. But remember that these guys got what they, they got what they agreed to. They, got, they, they agreed to Adinero and, and the landowner was not unfair to them. The landowner did not cheat them at all. He worked according to what they got. And, and remember, the landowner says to the, the text says that the landowner, they, are, they came to an agreement. And then the text also says that, that not only the landowner come to an agreement, but he says to the others, he says to them, I will pay you what is right. That's what he says to the others. But the first that he says, we have an agreement, I will pay you that. Watch this. We can be assured that God will never ever be unfair to us. Though he may, for his own purpose and pleasure, bestow greater blessing on someone else who seems less deserving. But he will never ever be unfair to us. He will never be less than fear, but reserves the right to be more than fear as pleases him. He reserves the right to be more than fear as pleases him. Can I tell you, I am sharing this and preaching, but this, it still bothers me. It still bothers me that, that, that God could, could, could give somebody else something better than what, that, that, than what he gives to me, having served him so. But that's just the nature of our 
God. The reasons for the landowner's generosity were completely in the landowner himself and not in the ones who received. God is generous because of who he is. It's not about you. It is about God. It is about God. There are a few, few points I wanted us to, to make to us as we, we, we wrap up this little, little, little talk. You see, living under grace is sort of a two-edged sword. Under grace, we can't come to God complaining, don't I deserve better than this? Because God will reply, does this mean that you really want me to give you what you deserve? Do, do, do you really want me to give you what you deserve? Now, think about that for a little bit. That, that if God really gives us what we deserve, we really deserve what? Judgment. That's what we deserve. And so we have to be very, very careful. And remember these, the, the, this as well. That grace, that grace is not based on length of service, but it's this, this determined, well, well, rewards, let me put it so, rewards are not based on length of service, but are determined by quality of service. So it's not because you've been serving a long time. It's not because you, are, you have been, been doing this for a long time. It's, 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 it's the quality. It's the, it's the quality. And we have to bear this in mind because many times we think because I am here in this church, I'm here in this, on this earth before that person, therefore I feel a sense of entitlement. A second thing that this passage is te teaching us is that God is sovereign. Hear what the landowner says. The landowner says, can't I do as I wish with what is my own? He is talking about the sovereignty of God. That God can do what he pleases. Once he doesn't breach his own character, he can do anything he pleases. And that still bothers me. But it's true. The sovereignty of God. And remember, God is generous. He's kind. He's that kind of a God. He's very, very kind. It's, it's not like you and I who withhold a lot and we give based on who we like or who are like us or who like us. God gives because of his own generosity. But here's a point I want to come to, which bothers me as I prepared. Don't bargain with God. Instead, trust him. Let me repeat that. Don't bargain with God. Instead, trust him. In other words, Lord, no matter what you want me to do, I'll serve you. I'm not going to bargain with you. What am I talking about? So this story, by the way, is coming from the story of the rich young ruler. Jesus, of course, approached a rich young ruler. When he approached a rich young ruler, sorry, the rich young ruler approached Jesus. When the rich young ruler approached Jesus, he says to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He's bargaining. He's bargaining. And Jesus says to him, you know the commandments. And he says, and he, Jesus quotes to him a few uh, the, the commandments. And he says, all these I've kept since my youth. And Jesus says to him, well, uh, guess what? Uh, go and sell what you have, give it to the poor. And he, was, he found himself in a dilemma. Because he thought salvation was about bargaining. That he, there's something that he could do and that God would do kind of a thing. And do not ever bargain with God. In fact, the story went down and when the, the rich young ruler walked away, Peter says and the disciples said, Wow, then who can be saved? Because Jesus said that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And Peter exclaimed and said, Then who can be saved? And Jesus says, With man it is impossible, with God all things are possible. And then Peter says to Jesus, The truth is, we have left everything to serve you. What is in it for us? In other words, again, Peter is bargaining. What is in it for us? Because we have served you. Because we have given up for you. What is in it for us? And Jesus says to him, you know, Peter, the truth is, the 12 of you, you're going to sit on 12 thrones, you're going to dress the, 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 the Israel, Israel's nation. And, and then Peter, Jesus goes on to say, but the truth is, there are others who are coming after who, and anybody who give up, give up uh, um, house and property and, and relatives and so on for my sake, they, they, they're going to get a hundredfold kind of a thing. And then Jesus makes a statement, the last shall be first, and the first last. 
He recognized that Peter was entering into a bargaining as well. Because I did that, I deserve this. Because I did that, I must get something. And Jesus wants us to be careful about that. In fact, he agreed with the laborers for a, a denarius. In other words, they agreed that if we do this, then you pay us that. Again, bargaining. But notice what he says to the other laborers. He says to them, go in my vine vineyard and whatever is right, I will pay you. And when it comes to payday, those who didn't have a contract, those are the ones who won. Those who didn't have a contract, those are the ones who won out. Never bargain with God. Just go and do what God asks you to do. Because God can bless you beyond what you can imagine. I'll give you a, 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 an illustration, a life, a true to life uh, illustration. You know, uh, once as, as, as doing um, uh, a, a function for somebody, and uh, as I was, the person asked me to come on and, and share at this function, the person says to me, what's your charge? So I said to the, said to the person, I, I, I don't do that. I don't, I don't have a charge. I, 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 don't, I don't give that kind of uh, information. Whatever you can do, just, just do it. The person says, no, you, you must have a charge. Just, what's your charge? And I said to the person, I was insistent. I said to the person, don't do that to me. Just whatever you want to do, just, just do it. The, the truth is, friends, I had a kind of figure in my mind, but, but, I, but I didn't want to, to, to do that because I, I'm, I'm fearful of people thinking that you're, you're peddling the, the, the gospel, or peddling the, the ministry. So the person, of course, the person says to me, all right, all right, all right, leave, 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 leave it, leave it, leave it. Remember, I had a figure in my mind. I didn't share the figure. But then the person, the person, when the person finally, quote unquote, remunerated me, it was far more than what I had in my mind, far more than what I had expected. So as I prepared this, that illustration came to my mind. Never bargain with God. And when I say bargain with God, God, if, 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 I, if I do this, then, then you need to do that. No, just, just trust God and, and walk by faith. Because these men, the landowner says to them, whatever is right, I'm going to give it to you. And they were surprised beyond their minds. Can you imagine what these men that came last went home and told their wives? Can, can you imagine a smile on your face? Because grace does that. Grace, when you experience it in a true way, it causes you to talk. It causes you to share. It causes you to recognize that I don't deserve this, but look where God do. And you have to tell people about it. So if you're not telling people about God and what he has done, maybe you haven't fully appreciated the grace of, of God. Another thing is this. God has more for us than we deserve. Write that down. God has more for us than we deserve. He has more than we deserve. Two more things and I'll stop. Don't you ever look down on late comers. Don't. You see, the Pharisees did that. And I think this parable is also and taking a, a, a swipe at the Pharisees as well. They thought to themselves that they were, they were it. They were the, they were the righteous ones of the day. They were, they, were, they were God's preferred people of the day kind of a thing. The Pharisees, you know, being the leaders of the, the, the religious leaders of the day. They thought they, that they were it. But Jesus had news for them. In fact, Jesus puts it this way. He says to them, the truth is the, 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 the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom ahead of you. And I'm saying to us, friends, do not look down on late comers. A person who comes to faith in Jesus Christ late can be a person who will outdo you in ministry and eventually as well a person who experiences God's grace more, even more abundantly than you have. The, the story, the biblical story that I have in mind is, the, is, is Mary that washed uh, Jesus' uh, feet with her hair. Remember that story? And Jesus make a statement. Him say, him say, this lady loved much because she has been forgiven much. 
In other words, this lady was a, a, a prostitute washing Jesus' feet. And, and Simon says, if this man were a prophet, he would know that this lady is not right. Something not right with our spirit. She's a prostitute. And Jesus, Jesus just read, read what Simon was probably saying. And, and he says to him, Simon, and he gave him a parable of a person owing, owing some money. And he says, the person that is forgiven a million dollars versus a person who is forgiven a thousand dollars. Which one do you think would, would love more and, and be accepting of this more? And Simon says, the one who is forgiven a million dollars. And Jesus says, you have judged correctly. This woman since I come in this place, has not stopped wash, wiping my feet. And I come in your house, you never do it. And she has been forgiven much because she loved much. She understood, she, she was a recipient of grace because of her own humility. Oh, last one, and I'm done. Whenever we watch others and what they get, resentment towards God builds up. Let me say that again. Whenever we watch others and what they get, resentment towards God builds up. Stop watching what people get and give thanks for what you have. Stay in your lane. Receive God's grace. Thank God for God's grace. Whenever we see God blessing people, let's rejoice with them. Be happy for them. These guys weren't happy for the others. And they resented the landowner. They resented God. You and I sometimes resent God because of what he's doing in people's life. May that never be us. Because God is that kind of God. I'm going to pray for you quickly. And I want to pray for those who... You think that God has treated you unfairly? I want to pray for those whose hearts are not grateful for others' prosperity. I want to pray for those of us who struggle with self-righteousness. I want to pray for those of us who have been serving God, hoping for him to see you and reward you because of your work. And I want to pray for those of us who need to acknowledge and receive this grace that God is extending to us. Let's pray. And so, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing through this word. Thank you for your grace. We thank you for the kind of God that you are. And Lord, we recognize that your economy runs different from our economy. Your economy is not quite an economy of law, but an economy of grace. Lord, we have learned that you operate out of who you are, not, not out of who we are. And Lord, we are thankful for that. We want to pray for our friends, Lord, who, who think that you have treated them unfairly over the years. They have looked on, looked on to what others have and what, what is happening in others' life. And they have be, we have become envious. We have become uh, ready at. Just as these men in the text, their eyes were, were envious. Lord, help us. Help our hearts, we pray. And for those of us, Lord, who can't be grateful for other people, Lord, help us to come to a place where we stop we, we're so, we stop being so mean and, and, and envious. And in Jamaican parlance, we say, bad mind. And Lord, us look at what you are doing and thank you for who you are. Lord, for those of us who struggle with self-righteousness, that's, by the way, Lord, this is something that none of us would want to admit, at least publicly. But Lord, we just pray that you'll touch our hearts and help us to understand, Lord, that self-righteousness gets us nowhere, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. And Lord, even though we think we are long-standing members or long-standing people and we have years of service and we think because of that we are deserving of certain things, Lord, help us, Lord, to, to, to watch our hearts posture and, Lord, rely on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And Lord, for those of us who are serving you, hoping that you will see us and that you will reward us for our work, may we get rid of that spirit. Lord, may we not enter into bargaining with you. May we just work because we trust you and we know that you are a rewarding and kind God. May we serve from that place, not because of something we, we actually want, but knowing that you know best and you are the best gift for us. And Lord, for that person who doesn't know Jesus Christ and grace is being extended, extended now, we pray that they'll come to a place that they'll receive grace, that they'll repent of their sins, they'll turn away from sins and turn to Jesus Christ because of the grace that is extended to them even now. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Amen. Amen.
We're going to be having communion at this time. And so we want you to just stick around with us as we share the emblems and as we just reflect on the life, death, burial, resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And of course, his, his return again, because he's coming back with rewards. He's coming back with more grace, abundant grace. God bless you. He's that kind of God. Let's remain for communion. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you of joining in of you having breaking of bread this morning i hope you have your emblems ready what a word from our brother paul mm. brother paul thank you for sharing so much with us this morning boy the word is troubling me this morning but i want to give god thanks for him sharing with us about god's grace and it's so fitting at a time like this as we are having breaking of bread to us to thinking about god's grace mm. God's grace. And what comes to my mind immediately is just an acronym about grace. Mm. God's riches at Christ's expense. And you hear that coming out again. Riches, generosity, mm. the grace of God coming out for, mm. to us. And we really want to thank God for it. But Brother Paul, you touch, I mean, so many points mm. um, this morning. But I just want to reiterate, I mean, what you, the, the five points that you talk about. Talk about God's abundant grace, God's appealing grace, God's amazing grace, abnormal grace, and the last one, um, un antagonizing. antagonizing. See, it's antagonizing me as well. Antagonizing <laughs> grace. And we really want to thank God um, for that. Mm. You know, for how 
he he loves us that's what shows us his love for us right and you you, you talk about don't bargain with God I think that's what stood out to me so much this mm. morning and a lot of times we, we we do things but we don't realize that that's what we are really doing mm. right and when we bargain with God you know, for me, it is saying that, listen, I'm losing out because God has so much in store. The truth is, for each one of us, if we bargain and we want to get that from God, what is it that really, truly we should get from God? It's punishment. It's a punishment. It's exactly. You understand? Mm-hmm. But God's grace towards us. And I just love that, you know, he's that kind of God. He's that kind of God. And I want to say, as we come this morning to, to, to break bread, the emblems, you know, symbolizes that for us. God's grace, kindness of God. What we deserve mm. doesn't give it to us. What mm. he took that on himself. Mm. And we are, you know, so minded by scripture, you know, that on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. Mm. And when he has given thanks, he broke it. Mm. And he says, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And I want us not to to rush into taking the emblems this morning, but for us to just to to pause, to think about that grace of God that I don't deserve, but he has lavished unto me. Mm -hmm. God's riches at Christ's expense. Just take a a minute. Just think about it. We're going to give thanks for the bread, which represents his body. So let us pray. Father, this morning, we are truly grateful. We thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for your grace that you have lavished on us. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he went all the way for us. We thank you this morning, Lord, for that favor, that love that demonstrated through the cross. We thank you for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. His body was broken. His body was bruised. His body was pierced for us. And we give thanks this morning that because of the grace of God, we can stand this morning, we can be here this morning giving thanks. Lord, you remind us, you know, do this until you, in remembrance, until you come. Lord, one more time, yet one less time. So from grateful hearts this morning, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. For your grace and your mercies. Amen. 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 Let's eat. And in the same way, Mm. the scripture reminds us. Thank you, Lord. Mm. That after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. His blood signifies the new covenant that we have, the grace that we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. I was going to ask my brother, Paul, if he can give thanks for... Sure. The songwriter says, No blood, no altar now. The sacrifice is over. No flame, no smoke ascends an eye. The lamb is slain no more. But richer blood has flown from nobler veins to purge the soul from guilt and cleanse the reddest of stains. 
Lord, we thank you so much for the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood which is powerful enough, efficacious enough, effective enough to eliminate us from your wrath. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you that we can we find salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. He died in my stead, in our stead, and for that we are eternally grateful. So Lord, we thank you that you know, your word says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. We thank you that the blood has ultimately been shed by our Lord. May we continue to remember this and remember him and remember his grace and live in freedom. Amen. Amen. Let us drink. Just join me in a time of prayer as we just lift up those who are sick and our nation. Let's pray. Father, we come again to you and we thank you that you are our God. Now we lift up this nation, Jamaica, land we love to you. Lord, we come and we repent. Lord, of the sin, of the crime, and the, the violence, the murders, Lord, that we have shed in our streets. Lord, we thank you that you don't deal with us as our sins deserve what we deserve. Mm -hmm. But we thank you for your grace and your mercies towards us as a people in this nation. Lord, we thank you. We pray today, Lord, against the injustice, Lord, the different things that are happening in this nation. Lord, we take a stand against every plot, every plans of the enemy, Lord, that would want to rule over in this nation. Lord, thank you that you are our God. Lord, thank you that you have not forgotten about us. You are with us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we as your people, Lord, who are called by your name, that, Lord, as we humble ourselves and we turn from our wicked ways, Lord, you promise to heal, mm. to restore our land. And we come, Lord, this morning with grateful hearts. Come this morning with hearts of gratitude. Lord, nothing of us, but because of he, you are that kind of God. And we thank you this morning. Lord, we pray that we'll be people of integrity, people who look to you, people who walk in the way that you called us to walk. Lord, we pray for our leaders in all sectors. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, we will look to you, Lord, in the way that you would desire to, to lead this nation. Lord, we pray that God will not give up as a people. We'll continue to look to you. Lord, we pray protection over this island. We pray for... Lord, your hands to be upon us. Cover us, Lord. Cover our borders. Cover everything, Lord, that, that we'll do, Lord, that will bring glory and honor and praise to your name. So, Father, we thank you for this nation, Jamaica land we love. We pray that your hands of blessing will continue to be upon this nation. And we give you thanks. Lord, we lift up those who are not well. Lord, and we, we pray, Lord, you see the hearts, you see, you know the persons, Lord, you know each name, you know every number of ear on their heads. Even for this morning, Lord, for those who are listening, Lord, and not feeling well themselves, we pray, Lord, that you, by your spirit, will touch them even now in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, you will bring healing to their bodies. Where there is pain, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will remove pain. We pray, Lord, that you will bring your hands of healing to us to touch them, Lord where they need your touch, in the name of Jesus. Restore them, Lord, we ask. Lord, we just continue to look to you for those who are grieving, the last of loved ones, the last of, you know, different things, even jobs, different sort of loss, and people are grieving in different ways. We ask, Lord, that you will restore, that, Lord, your love, your arms will just minister, wrapped around them, Lord, at this time, that they will know that you are God. So, Father, we pray for comfort for them. We pray for your peace 
upon them and over them. We pray for your provision and, Lord, all that is needed for them at this time. Lord, each one grieve differently, and we know you can minister to them as you desire. So we thank you again, Lord, for what you will continue to do in us and through us. And we bless you, and we continue to give you thanks, because you are God, and there is none like you. So be glorified, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just join us in another song of worship, and then we'll come and then we'll have a benediction. to be 
To him who is able to keep you from stumbling mm. and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week. And remember, he's that kind a God. Bless you. To receive confidential prayer, email or text your request to prayer at solofieldchapel.org or by text at 876-877-9794. Visiting with us for the first time? Welcome! We invite you to complete the contact card in the link below to connect with us. God bless you. Thank you for giving cheerfully. Here are a few convenient ways to do so. One, you may deposit your tithes and offerings in the drop box at the church office at number 7, Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tithes and offerings can also be done by a direct online deposit to our Swallowfield Chapel BNS New Kingston current account number 804161, branch number 50575, or click Give on our website, swallowfieldchapel.org. Donations for food care packages should be so indicated. Meet up, the Young Adult-Led Ministry of Swallowfield Chapel will be starting a new series, From the Cell, a study through the Book of Philippians, on Monday, September 30. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Tell a friend and bring a friend. Let's meet up. Are you in a Connect group or ACE class? Well, if you're not, what are you waiting on? Sign up for a Connect group and an adult Christian education class. Come connect to God, dig into the Word with each other as we grow together. Click in the link in the description below to see the groups and classes offered this semester. Are you grieving the loss of a loved one? Grief Share provides hope and healing in these difficult times. Join Grooveshare Tuesdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Click the link in the description below to register. Join us for Wellness Wednesdays. Recharge your mind, body, and spirit. Prioritize your well-being and continue your wellness journey. Every Wednesday at 6 p.m. at number 7 Swallowfield Road. Commit to a healthier, happier you. Also, it is not too late to sign up for the More Couples Weekend to be held at Royalton Blue Waters on the weekend of October 25 to 27. Visit wallerfieldchapel.churchcenter.com to sign up. More, making our relationships extraordinary. The Prison Ministry Cake Sale is today, right after both services. Come nice up your taste buds and help raise funds to support the Prison Ministry's Christmas outreach projects across several correctional facilities. You won't want to miss Mark 9. Nine years of music and award show. Sunday, September 29 at 5 p.m. at number 5 featuring Mark Johnson. Special guests include Paul Henry, The Hummingbirds, Swallow Feet Chapel Sunday School Choir, and more. Visit markjohnson.com slash RSVP to RSVP today. Ladies, come join this Friday as we go forward. A guide to moving from stock to abundance with Dr. Kishana Salmon Ferguson. This Friday, October 4, on Zoom, starting at 6.30 p.m. Yeah, it's wellness night for the man's them this Friday, October 4, starting at 7 p.m. Brother, your body is the only one you will ever have. So if you're a man, you should pay attention to how you manage your body. And if you're a man, muscles are a huge factor in the quality of life. Also, if you're a man, you want to know what David Hemmings are going to say this Friday, whether you're 18 or 80 years old. Bring a bro. This is a male-only event. Melo is the men's ministry of Swallowfield Chapel. Let's go. 
man a step up. You know said that them can't talk to we. Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Man a step up. You know said that them can't talk to we. Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Man a step up. You know said that them can't talk to we. Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Man a step up. You know said that them can't talk to we. Turn the flame up and take it to a hundred degree. Give me the Bible, no matter where coming from. Give me the Bible, give me the Bible, give me the Bible in my hand. Whatever step with the pallet a bit faster. Don't bother with the crime and disaster. What was it? No, pretty many, pretty many, pretty many. That would be stand up. Or School Liberty Academy is seeking someone to fill the vacant position of the executive director. If you're interested, please send an email to liberty at priory.mainoffice at gmail.com or visit our website for more information. Members, please save the date. Sunday, October 6th at 6 p.m. at number 5. We will host a hybrid members meeting. For those unable to join us in person, look out for the link which will be provided so you can participate virtually. Stay tuned! For the links to these and other activities, visit swallowfieldchapel.churchcenter.com. May God bless you all as we worship together.